Hey to you guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do a little bit of a transplant. I'm starting to get into plants that are probably better for me to grow, uh, things that are lower light that I can grow throughout my house, and uh, yeah, maybe a little bit low care, uh, things that don't require constant watering. Uh, I say that, but I'm starting to grow calathea, so uh, <laughs> that just goes out the window. Self-watering pots work for me though. Uh, so anyway, um, this is a Monstera deliciosa. Uh, it used to be in the philodendron family, but now it is a monstera. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this plant is just a little seedling, and uh, I wanted to grow it from a baby and then have it grow up bigger because I think that's really cool, and uh, to see it develop, that's pretty awesome. Uh, so And it's also cheaper buying them small. Uh, so then, uh, yeah, right now it just looks like a regular heartleaf philodendron. Uh, as it grows, as it matures, it's going to develop cuts or holes in the leaves. Uh, I those are called fenestrations. The uh, the leaves get uh, slices in them and holes. It's really really cool. Uh, the I don't know the reason why it gets those. It, the jury's out on it. Um, these are epiphytes, so they kind of climb up trees and they have beautiful big long strap like roots <clears throat> or rope like roots. And uh, I think personally that uh, they develop the the uh, the holes in the leaves so that more sun can get down through. Uh, some people think that it's to allow wind to go through them. Uh, so anyway, jury's out. It doesn't really matter. It's beautiful. That's all that matters to me. And uh, yeah. So since this guy is a climber, an epiphyte, uh, it likes um, a loose soil. So what I'm going to use today for my soil is just my basic pro mix. Uh, that I use, I'm going to use the BX, which is just the, the all-purpose potting soil. It's a peat-based soil with lots of perlite. I'm also going to use some orchid bark. This is a medium fir bark. I'm going to use this to add uh, extra airflow uh, into the root system. And I also had some leftover coconut coir. Uh, that is going to uh, just go in there because I have it. I'm going to mix it in with the peat moss. Peat moss is, is really, really good because it uh, does a, uh, a pH buffer. Um, I believe that the pH of uh, peat moss is like a 5.5. So when you're watering your plants in my area, uh, tap water is about a pH of 8. So most plants like to be maybe 5.5 to 7, usually I guess 6.5 to 7.5. So my tap water is just a little bit too alkaline for, for most plants. So over time, uh, the soil gets to be too high of a pH and uh, and it, it really has trouble. The, the plants have trouble taking up the nutrients and in that you might see some yellowing of leaves or, or whatever, nutrient deficiencies. So um, to, to aid in that, you want to have something that kind of buffers the, the pH of the soil. So peat moss does that really, really well. Anyway, uh, let's go to it. I'm going to mix this coconut coir to um, some of my existing uh, soil and uh, I'm going to use this nice big pot. I got these on sale at my local garden center. Uh, at this time of year pots go on sale so this big guy was I don't know like $14 which normally it was 30 so it's a uh, it might have been even less than that. One of them another big one I got was $10 so and it's it's terracotta, it's glazed, it's lovely. Hopefully the plant likes it. I showed you the Monstera. Another thing that I did, did a little arts and crafts project and I uh, made this uh, plant stake out of a PVC pipe and I glue gunned a little bit around here. I originally tied it but then uh, found that the even if I tied it, it, it moved down the, the, um, the slippery uh, pipe very easily, so I ended up glue gunning it. Just wrap, wrap, wrap. This is, oh, what is it? Um, it's just a natural rope, a uh, sizal, sizal rope. So this is a little bit porous, so the roots, when they when they get here, they're going to naturally want to cling to it. Uh, it's not not moss, so it's they're not going to be able to grow into it so much, but uh, they're, they're at least going to cling to it. One thing that I do notice with uh, anything that's climbing, like an epiphyte, um, whether it be pothos, philodendron, uh, monsteras, if the roots, as they grow up, are able to connect to something, 
they tend to, to, to grow much better. The leaves tend to get bigger. If they're not allowed to do their thing, they're not allowed to grab onto something, uh, the leaves tend to be uh, smaller. So pothos, uh, the ones that we get in the store, they're, they're usually a kind of tiny leaf, but they can potentially get to be uh, almost uh, 12 inches long. So maybe even a little bit more. It's amazing when you go to the tropics and see these things gigantic. Oh, it's amazing. So anyway, I'm rambling again. Uh, I ended up putting a, uh, a cap on here. If you want to see me make one of these, I can always use more. Um, just let me don't know down in the comment section below. I left a little bit of a spot up at the top because <clears throat> there's like a, where I can connect two of these poles together. So in time, when this Monstera gets a little bit bigger and I need to add another pole to it, I could just put that, that separator in and then add another pole to the top and then wrap more rope around it. But for now, I've got just a cap. So, and then that's just going to go in the pot and we'll, we'll get this thing started. All right, so let's make up the soil. I'll bring it down a little bit closer too. Okay, so I forgot to turn my camera on, <laughs> so I'll fill you in. I put a piece of paper towel on uh, the bottom of the pot. The paper towel will uh, stop the soil from, from uh, draining out the bottom for the first little while. The paper towel will degrade, biodegrade, and um, it'll just be soil eventually. But for now, while the, the soil is still loose, uh, will be contained. So you can use uh, pieces of terracotta pot, you can use uh, some stones, you can use a sponge, you can use whatever the heck you want, but I use paper towel because it's easier. And the, uh, the drain hole is quite large on this, as you could probably see. It's, um, it's about an inch around, or across. So, and I started to put my soil together uh, with you not on, uh, let me move the, the camera a bit. I started to, to put this together. Uh, I'm using some of the orchid bark and I have the coconut coir down in the bottom and I also use some of the leftover um, uh, pro mix from another job and uh, yeah so now I'm ready to add more pro mix to this. So this is the all-purpose uh, pro mix. Uh, it's got the mycorrhizae in there as well. The myco, myco active. Anyway. So I'm just going to mix it in. The bark, like I said, is going to uh, allow for better drainage, uh, more airflow into the roots. Mix it up really good. All right. I'll have to do this in stages. So I'm able to mix it up nicely. I'll use some more bark, I'll use some more soil in a minute. This will be the nice base. So, <clears throat> Monstera is a lower light tolerant plant. It likes bright indirect light, but can go a little bit on the darker side. If you don't give it enough light, the, the leaves will actually get a little bit smaller. So to, to have the, uh, the good growth, it needs more light, <laughs> but it is a lower light tolerant. I'm not saying that it's a low light plant, it's just it doesn't need to be in a full sun location. So just going to add some of this to the, to the pot. I'm going to raise the camera up a bit because I am now going to add in my pole. The pole is going to be a little bit off-centered, only because the plant still has to fit in there. So it's going to lean off to the side for the moment. Um, also, keep in mind that if you make one of these, you don't want the, the rope to be sitting in the soil, because if the soil is uh, moist, it's going to break down the rope. So if the rope breaks down, it could un untwist, so you'll just want to, if, if it does start to to, to break and over time you can always glue gun it back. So I didn't glue gun all of it, I just glue gun the ends. So I need to add a little bit more soil. All right. And I'll need a little bit more. Perfect. And now I'm going to take this plant out of its 
pot. And I'm just, as you can probably see, the particle size in this is actually quite large. So they've done the same thing. They've mixed the soil with a lot of bark. They want to make sure that there's good airflow to the root system. And you'll notice that the Monstera roots are, are quite large. This is only a seedling, so, so uh, it's still kind of small. But uh, they will become very, very rope-like. So I'm just going to take some of the soil off of the roots. And I see there's some slow-release fertilizer. I might add some slow-release fertilizer into this as well. Give me a second, and I'll go grab some of my Osmocote. So this maybe isn't what I, <laughs> maybe not the best option, but uh, it's a slow-release fertilizer nonetheless. I'm going to use this. This is what I have, and it's uh, for a hanging basket. So this is more for a blooming plant, but uh, it still has some nitrogen in there. It's just going to be an all-purpose kind of, um, it'll just help the plant grow. So I'm going to put a few shakes of this in there. There we go. And we'll just mix it in. I'll put some of this in the next grouping of soil as well. Mix it throughout. So again, I want to try to, to take some of the soil off, but it doesn't look like I'm going to get very much. I don't want to damage the roots too much. The plant isn't root bound, so I don't want to I don't want to stress it out too, too much. If it was root bound, I'd want to try to untangle them a little bit more so that it would stop uh, uh, spinning around the pot. But this one is still not too bad. Okay, so I think I'm in good shape. I've hollowed out a side here. So this side is going to basically be against the pole so that the plant still looks centralized in the pot. I'm going to move the camera down a bit so you're able to see a little bit more of what I'm talking about. Okay, so as you can see, we got the, the pole in here. Uh, I'll show you at the very end, I'll give you a better look. But, and then I've got the, the plant kind of centralized in the pot. I'm not sure whether you're able to see that very well. Um, I'm going to raise this plant up a little bit more. I want the plant itself... No, I think that that's a, a good level. Uh, I can always add more soil in as the plant grows as a top dressing, or uh, like uh, putting some worm castings or something. Uh, to add some um, some nutrition, some compost maybe to the top of the, the, the pot a little bit later on. So I'm going to go and mix some more soil. The, uh, the support wants to fall down, it's not completely in the pot yet. So let's, let's make some more soil. There we go. It's not an exact science, it's not like one part this, two parts that. I'm just doing whatever feels right. Some more of the bark. I'm going to make sure that it's going throughout. You could use a fine bark if you have it. You could take the bark out if you don't. You can add extra perlite. Making soil is, is not an exact science. Whatever works best for you and what you have available, that's what you can use. Some coarse sand might help you out. That grow stone that I also use from time to time, that would work as well. Just going to add some more slow release fertilizer. Mix it in here. Slow release fertilizer just helps you out when you're not actually fertilizing. I like to, this is for hanging baskets, but I like to, uh, to put slow release fertilizer in, but I also like to fertilize with a water soluble fertilizer as well as. So it's just kind of an in between when I'm just watering, if I forget to fertilize, it's still got some nutrients in there. So we've mixed this up, now I'm going to move this over, we'll add this in to the plant. Here we go. Move the camera up. Oh my gosh. Such an ordeal. So it's not a, a glamorous job. So I've got some in there. Just going to move it around. Use your fingers and get right in there. 
people were doing a study saying that uh, getting your hands dirty makes you feel better. So <laughs> get in there, make your hands dirty, lower your stress level, unless you hate plants, then it might increase your stress level. But uh, if you're watching this, you probably don't hate plants. So, <laughs> okay. Just going in, adding more soil. I want to try to make sure that the uh, the the um, the stake is as straight up as I can, because in time, when I need to add more to it, I don't want it to have a great lean. The PVC is going to hold on to its shape, so it's not going to collapse over time. I saw it on Facebook, and I'm like, I have to try that. That's perfect. All right. So there we go. I'm going to go get a, a little base, and then we'll water this in, and then we'll, we'll look at this plant when it's all, all said and done. Okay, so let's water this in. I'm using some nice lukewarm water and it's going to enjoy this. So for watering these, you want to water them fairly fairly well when you water it and you want to let it dry almost completely before you water it again. Um, these guys are, are tolerant of drier air or dry, drier uh, soil. Uh, they, they like um, a higher humidity uh, you might notice some, some browning of the leaves if uh, the humidity is too low, but also browning of the leaves could be that you have too much uh, uh, minerals in your water, too, too uh, like chlorine or, or something bad in your water. So if you find that you're getting a lot of uh, uh, brown edges, you might want to look into that. Uh, start uh, playing with things, see what uh, helps correct the problem. So hopefully this likes its spot. It took... It took a, a whole uh, jug of water, and I'm sure it will need another, but I'll let it sit, and I'll water it again maybe tomorrow, see if it needs it, and uh, yeah, let's look and see what this guy looks like all finished. Okay, so I got it on the ping pong table in the game room. <laughs> There's so much echo in this space. So here's the uh, the moss pole, or let's call it a moss pole. It's, uh, it's a rope and a PVC pipe. And the plant itself looks really, really cute in there. It still has lots of space to grow. But like I said, I can add to the top of this. Uh, things are looking pretty good. Sorry for the echo. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, check in on this plant in a few months to see what's happening. Hopefully it's going to grow really, really well. I'm really hopeful. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. And uh, like and subscribe. Anyway, happy growing, everyone.